In this episode, my climbing journey continues. It's been nine months since I started, and I've been enjoying the variety that climbing has to offer. From humble top roping, I've branched out and now regularly boulder indoors and sport climb outdoors. I've even tried my hand at leading a few trad climbs. I'm still working on these videos, so stay tuned for those. But now it was time to try something big. And in this episode, more so than any other I've made, I was pushed to the limit, brought to tears, and well and truly humbled. This is multi-pitch climbing. I travelled to Norway to learn from Pete Whitaker from the YouTube channel Wide Boys. Pete is one of the very finest trad and crack climbers in the world. To truly understand what crack climbing is and just how ridiculously strong Pete is, you have to check out the Wide Boys channel. Some of this stuff is outrageous. Earlier in the week, Pete had been teaching me the basics of trad climbing. Trad or traditional climbing is when the first person up the climb, the leader, places their own protection in the wall. That means there are no bolts in situ like there are in sport climbing. This opens a whole new can of worms for how and where to place gear and has the potential for areas where no protection can be placed or gear placements that might not stop a fall. It adds a new dimension to climbing. Like I said earlier, those videos of me learning trad are in the pipeline, so check back here and the Wide Boys channel as to not miss anything. That's not what this video is about. For the end of my trip, Pete wanted me to try something totally new. He didn't want me to lead anything or even attempt some horridly difficult climb. The mission was singular and simple. Let's climb something big. Like going on 200 meters big. This would be my first big multi-pitch climb and nobody was sure if I could handle this. Would the height get to my head? What about the exposure? Is a beginner climber even fit enough to climb that much? Since I wasn't leading, I felt it should be fine. Little did I know I was about to embark on a journey that would truly push me to the limit, both physically and mentally. The primary goal was simple, get to the top. But Pete and I discussed that the real prize would be in free climbing this monster. That means no falls, no sitting on the rope for a rest, no pulling on ropes or cams to ascend, climbing it all on my own steam. Pete assured me that the climbing difficulty would be within my abilities and since I was following, I'd have no chance of taking a huge fall. I could just enjoy the easy climbing and the views. Piece of cake. Immediately, I knew I was in trouble. The approach, and by that I mean walking from the car to the foot of the cliff, was nuts. This peaceful shot does not do it justice and makes it look like a stroll in the forest, but there were scrambly sections of this hike where I was sh my pants. Brilliant. Mike's gripping on on the approach. There's <laughs> <laughs> nowhere for me to stand. <laughs> come, come up here. So, why is the approach so f***ing terrifying? It was hot, humid, steep, and I'd felt like I'd done a full day out before I even put my harness on. It's like a a climb in itself <laughs> to get to the base. Yeah. But now it was time to start climbing. Right, internet. Critique me. Is that good? Yeah, that one looks slightly undressed. Oh, I'd say slightly, it's wrong. Sl slightly actually just in it's incorrect, incorrect. <laughs> and, da and dangerous. Yeah. So cut that. Pete leads the first pitch. Clearly no practical rope would facilitate a 200 meter climb, so the climb is split into sections called pitches. I'd never climbed more than a single pitch, hell I'd never even climbed anything more than 20 meters before, so this was all new to me. As Pete leads, he places gear for protection. Once he's at the top of the pitch, I then follow him up, retrieving each piece of gear as I go. Then we repeat. That's how you can climb hundreds of meters with only 50 meter ropes whilst leaving no gear behind. That's where I would have put it. Pitch one provided very easy climbing with stunning views. This was all going fine. Yeah, oh, 
the way in the chimney. It was like an early wide boys. Yeah. It's <laughs> epic. It's epic. <laughs> Nicely done. Yeah. Oh, that was good. <laughs> nice. Now, a quick word from our sponsor, AG1. AG1 is a daily foundational nutrition supplement made up of 75 high quality ingredients, carefully created to nourish your body. When on a big project like this, I want to make sure I have my basics covered to support my immune system. The last thing I want is to feel run down or unable to focus. This is especially important when I'm traveling as I really struggle to eat greens and fruit when living out of a suitcase and on the road. I like AG1 because they've worked it all out for me. It serves as my multivitamin, multimineral and greens blend all in one. Not only does it contain all the basics like zinc, vitamin C and probiotics in just 50 calories, its subtle sweet flavour is derived from plants, no synthetic sweeteners. All of this is designed to provide your body with the essential nutrients to help support metabolism, promote alertness, better focus and support gut health. With the AG1 travel packs, it's easy to continue your morning habit wherever you are. Just mix with water and shake. Since AG1 is sponsoring this video, they're offering my community a free one-year supply of AG Vitamin D3 and K2 and five AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. If you want to try AG1, go to drinkag1.com forward slash Mike Boyd to get started on your order. Thanks to AG1 for sponsoring today's video. By pitch three, I had really settled into the climbing and was loving it. To my surprise, I had no issues with the height or the exposure and the climbing so far had been easy, but enough to keep me on my toes. After a sandwich nearly 100 metres up, it was now time for pitch four. For me, this pitch was an absolute monster. Until today, it was double the height of anything I'd climbed before. Since I'm used to short, punchy sport climbs, I've never really needed to pause on convenient ledges to get my breath back or regain composure. So my plan was to just blast up this pitch like I normally do. And that was a mistake. Up the corner pitch, which is a little bit crooksy, just right at the end. So this is the one. I think if Mike can get this pitch, there is potential he could free it all the way to the top. It's gonna be tricky, it's gonna be tricky at the end, but you can definitely do it. You can definitely do it if he just digs in really deep. I think he can get it, I think he can get it. I don't think he's done much bridging before. He actually even asked down there what is bridging. So <laughs> that's what we're, uh, that's what, yeah, basically that's the experience that he has. So, so let's have a look down the little corner. This is the corner, it's going down. There's another team down there. Okay, climbing. The climbing was noticeably harder, but still well within my limits, despite my grunts and huffing and puffing. Yeah. <sighs> 
after 25 metres of laybacking, I began to get really pumped and the grunts grew more extreme. Just above halfway, I got to a jug that I was extremely grateful for. Thank f for that jug. Now, experienced climbers would simply hang around on this jug for a few minutes until their heart rate decreased and the lactic acid in their forearms disappeared. For some reason, I decided not to do that. Five metres from the top of the pitch, I began to fall apart. No, I don't have it. I can't, 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 I can't do it. Foothold's on the right, foothold's on the right, come on. There's one more up with, one more up with the, with the left. Come on, come on, come on, there, there, come on, keep going. Come on, come on. Yes, you're in, mate. Flipping in. There he is. There he is. Woohoo! Nicely done. There he is. Bosh! With encouragement from Pete and Kieran, I somehow made it to the top of the pitch without falling or sitting on the rope. However, now I was completely shattered. Here we are, at the top, top out. We've just got Mike to get up now. Uh, yeah, it was definitely a, um, it was definitely a pitch. It was definitely a pitch. And I think he's definitely capable of doing it, but he'll have to use a whole bunch of techniques and things that he's not done before, because it's very chimney-y, very, there's a bit of like off width, bridge, full bridging, bit of squeeze chimney. So fingers crossed, I'm really hoping he can manage to, um, uh, to get this one without falling. It would be, oh, it'd be flipping epic if you could manage to do it. That would be big, really big. Climbing. I was exhausted, but was actually climbing better than I had all day and making good progress, whilst taking rests on ledges when I could. Come on mate, that's it. So good. Okay, this is the rest. That was all very hard. <laughs> yeah. You looked so much better than the first, the first Yeah, I think I'm just like. so tired that I actually can't climb like crazy. Yeah, yeah. Forced efficiency. Yeah. Eventually, however, I reached a feature I'd never seen before. A chimney. An enormous crack 30 metres long, deep enough to crawl into, with smooth walls inside. How on earth do you climb up that? Well, like this. But I had to figure it out on the spot. Right, I've got to go up this chimney now. And it looks hard. And I'm a long way from the ground. Oh. How do I do this?
This is the most mental thing I've ever done. This is mental. Progress was agonizingly slow and extremely tiring. My technique was awful. Somehow, I shuffled my way up most of the chimney, but now I had to get back out. Ah, oh, It's so out of energy, I don't know what to do. You're, you're f***ing doing it, Mike. You're actually f***ing doing it, mate. Keep pressing, you've got big, big feet coming up. Come on, your right knee, got good feet. Come on, Mike. Mate, you're out. <laughs> so good, come on. Keep going, keep going. You've got, once you get your feet up to where your head are, you've got a big, big ledge. Come on. Yes, mate, come on. <laughs> I was five meters from the top of the whole climb and hadn't cheated once. Just a few more moves and I was home and dry. However, when I sat down on this natural chair to rest, I was done. The chimney had destroyed me and now I was so knackered I couldn't get off the chair. At this point, I stopped caring about the original goal. I didn't even want to get to the top. I just wanted to go home. I sat there, a stone's throw away from the prize, for a full 30 minutes. Just keep it together, you're doing so good mate, and I'm not just saying that. I contemplated getting Pete to come down and just save me, but then I realised that actually, the fastest way to get to the ground would be to get to Pete. Somehow, I picked my sorry ass off the ledge and with some of the worst climbing you've seen, began clawing my way to the finish line. Nicely done, mate. Good effort. Oh, brilliant. Oh my god. And smashed it. I'm so freaking proud of it. Kieran was like, Kieran was like, I'm gonna go up, and I was like, don't leave me. Woo! <laughs> 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 uh, if I didn't eat this right now, I feel like I might die. <laughs> Trad climbing is absolutely mental. It's the most mental sport in the world. Crazy, that was right on the absolute limit of what I'm capable of doing. Like, just the amount of climbing is so much compared to what I normally do. So proud of myself, man. So fucking, I can't actually cry, I'm so proud of myself. You should be, like, yeah. genuinely, you should be. Incredible. Yeah, probably don't put this in the video, but yeah, I really had to dig deep to do that, man. That was, that was crazy. Yeah, pumped. That was like from the bottom of whatever I had. Yeah, that was nuts. Cheers, man. Cheers, Pete. Yeah, nice one. Nice one.